believe us when we say that kids love to get scared as much as anyone. Crossover children, all are welcome, all welcome. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 gateway horror movies for kids. For this list, we're ignoring those films that feature sexuality and extreme violence, and are instead focusing on those films your parents reluctantly agreed to let you watch that got you hooked on horror. You can only see one thing at a time, and Movies like Goosebumps are not contenders here, since they are intended for a younger audience. Hannah, open the book! Not yet. <laughs> Number 10. Poltergeist. <laughs> the classic and iconic depiction of a haunted house, Poltergeist may be a film by Toby Hooper, the mind behind the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it clearly takes most of its influence from producer Steven Spielberg. This house is clean. His family-friendly style can be felt throughout, as we get lots of heartwarming scenes and dramatic character building among the footage of ghosts, skeletons, and demonic televisions. Watching the Freeling family be terrorized by this poltergeist as its energy is drawn to their small kids taps into some seriously traumatizing childhood fears, including clowns, weird noises at the window, and monsters in the closet. Although violence in the film is practically non-existent, prepare to be up all night. They're here. Number 9. Little Shop of Horrors Look, you're a plant! An inanimate object! Does this look inanimate to you, punk? This bizarre musical horror hybrid may be more a slapstick comedy than a scare-filled thrill ride, but this may trick adults into letting the younger kiddies watch. Keep in mind that this was the 80s, and a PG rating was easier to get. The Audrey 2 is not a healthy girl. Strictly between us, neither is the Audrey 1. Adapted from the Broadway musical, which was adapted from the Roger Corman dark comedy, Little Shop of Horrors follows the story of Seymour and his mysterious, bloodthirsty, musically talented plant, who grows to enormous sizes and requires more and more people to feed on. Feed me all night long. That's right, boy! You can do it! Feed me, Seymour! While most of the violence and sexy comedy is implied in hilarious musical numbers, this is still a classic monster movie. I don't know anyone who deserves to get chopped up and fed to a hungry plant! Number 8. An American Werewolf in London Please! Run! Another 80s horror classic. Seeing a pattern here? An American werewolf in London finally delves into R-rated territory. All right already. The film rental industry played a huge part in getting kids hooked on horror in the 80s. This entire generation of children had access to films like Friday the 13th and this werewolf shocker. Ah! Yeah! Ah! 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 Was director John Landis's reputation for comedies like Animal House and Blues Brothers that tricked families into showing this violent film to their kids. But this nightmarish story of a young traveler who's attacked and turned into a werewolf was revolutionary in its special effects and gruesomely violent dark humor. This is Gerald Bringsley. Gerald's the man you murdered on the subway. We thought it best for you not to see him as he's a fresh kill and still pretty messy. Number 7. The Lost Boys Look, this isn't a comic book, Sam. I mean, these guys are brutal killers. The 80s were a strange time for horror, with many of its teen-centric efforts becoming classics despite their R ratings. The creature of the night, Michael. Just like out of a comic book. You're a vampire, Michael. One such teen horror film sees a young Jason Patrick being seduced into joining some no-good bad boy gangsters. But this isn't your ordinary gang of L.A. hooligans. It's a streetwise group of young vampires. Where are you going, Star? For a ride. This is Michael. Let's go. The Lost Boys may have some over-the-top 80s violence, but it's clearly geared towards young teens. The majority of the film is shown from the perspective of preteens Corey Haim and Corey Feldman, 
end. There's no shortage of teen heartthrobs who make an appearance, including a brilliant early performance by Kiefer Sutherland as the leader of the pack. Bring some of this, Michael. Be one of us. Number six, The Sixth Sense. Mama? No. Dinner is not ready. While the late 90s were becoming oversaturated with increasingly violent and repetitive slasher films, Breakout director M. Night Shyamalan brought the world a tense, calculating ghost story that revitalized the horror genre for a new millennium. I see dead people. With an 11-year-old protagonist, how scary could a movie be? The affliction that young Cole suffers from is no laughing matter. And although kids of the 90s would snigger while repeating the iconic revelatory line, we can assure you that nobody was laughing during that tense scene in theaters. <laughs> With the violence at a minimum but tension high, Shyamalan knew how to scare the pants off both young and old. They don't see each other. They only see what they want to see. They don't know they're dead. Number five, It. I am eternal child. I am the eater of worlds and of children. This Stephen King adaptation has the distinction of being a miniseries made for commercial broadcast television. And, therefore, the filmmakers had no choice but to keep the blood, swearing, and sexuality to a minimum. Kiss me, fat boy! <laughs> for this reason, it's become a cult favorite among kids trying to scare each other daring each other to watch the film or walk close to sewers. Hi, Georgie. The story follows the victims and survivors of an otherworldly being who terrorizes and kills children from the small town of Derry, Maine. Taking on the form of Pennywise the Clown, it is responsible for nightmares around the world and instilling a fear of clowns in millions of underage viewers. <laughs> I'll kill you all! Number 4. Child's Play Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? <laughs> Chucky the Good Guy doll has become an easily recognizable horror icon, and nearly every kid can identify him. These same kids can probably also identify the exact moment they were traumatized for life by this 1980s classic. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho <laughs> Possessed by the spirit of serial killer Charles Lee Ray, Chucky seeks out a young, innocent body that he can transfer his soul into, and mercilessly kills anyone and everyone who gets in his way. <laughs> Thanks to its subject matter featuring a killer doll targeting a preschooler protagonist, the film has become a rite of passage horror film for kids. Hello, Andy. Number three, Jaws. Tomorrow's the 4th of July, and we will be open for business. Steven Spielberg's first masterful blockbuster success is a testament to his talent as a visual storyteller. Well, this is not a boat accident. It wasn't any propeller. It wasn't any coral reef. And it wasn't Jack the Ripper. The simple story of a great white shark that terrorizes a quiet seaside town built up one of the most tense and suspenseful cinematic experiences ever to grace the big screen. Oh, boys, I think he's come back for his noon feeding. An entire generation of moviegoers was afraid to swim in the ocean thanks to this flick, even though filmmakers kept the horror and violence at a PG level. Instead of relying on gore, Jaws uses cinematography, music, and dialogue to create a film that has kids covering their eyes the second the theme music comes on. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Number two, arachnophobia. Itsy bitsy spider. <laughs> Crawled up the water, spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider <laughs> out. <laughs> Although the fear of spiders is not limited to young people, there's a childlike glee with which this throwback monster movie plays out. Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing terror. 
It's not irrational. Produced by Steven Spielberg, this dark comedy imagines what would happen if a large and deadly spider from another country ended up in a quiet little town. Large spider webs appearing in farmhouses overnight, mysterious deaths, aggressive jumping spiders? Don't bother calling the local exterminator. They won't be much help. Rock and roll. The film relies heavily on our natural aversion to the creepy crawlies and successfully creates a feeling of nauseating dread without needing to resort to extreme violence. Never a moment's peace. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Oh, Patricia, you kill her. I'll watch. Number one, Gremlins. What are they doing? We're watching Snow White. And they love it. Spielberg strikes again with another PG-rated classic of 1980s horror. His influence can surely be felt throughout the decade, and especially in the filmography of director Joe Dante. <laughs> Although Dante created many horror classics that walk the line between family-friendly and adult dark humor, like Matinee and The Burbs, Gremlins is undoubtedly his best effort at a drive-in-inspired monster movie that teaches children a valuable lesson about taking care of your pets. His name's Gizmo. Giz? He's a mogwai. Kids may be drawn to gremlins, lulled into a sense of security by the cute, furby-looking gizmo, but they'll come out entertained and afraid of innocent-looking animals. <laughs> With enough humor to balance out the horror, gremlins shouldn't cause too many sleepless nights. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? What movie got you into horror films? Did you hear that? I heard that. What was it? Could be a lot of things. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Why are you son of a?